and Jim weren't welcome in the local school as blacks. And the closest colored school was in Neosho, eight miles away. So George just left to go get his education. He didn't know where he was going to stay in that town. He found the school and he slept in a barn next door. And after a few days, the woman who owned the barn found him. Her name was Mariah Watkins. She questioned him and immediately took him in under her wing. This little house came up, uh, was in a foreclosure. And it was in such bad condition that the bank called and asked me if I thought the Carver Association would like it because this was the site of his school. So we decided we'd tear the house down and make a nice little park and put a stone saying this is where Carver went to school. The last moment we thought, you know, we better check the house before we tear it down. So Dr. Shaver and I went in with a historical architect. It was not fun going in there. There were needles and trash. And this guy took a hammer and started pulling away the walls and lo and behold, underneath this house was the original school. It's very unusual to be able to find a building with the historical integrity that this has uh, after so many years of neglect and abuse. And... The teacher at the Neosho School, his name was Stephen Frost, was unable to supply George with the answers that he wanted. The teachers then in the colored schools were not very well educated themselves usually because they hadn't been much time since slavery had been legal and they had not been allowed to learn before that. Someone was coming through town, a couple in a cart, moving to Fort Scott, Kansas and George took the ride. It truly is a remarkable story. Not only has he succeeded, but, but my God, when you understand how far this uh, orphaned child of a despised race, as he referred to himself, had been able to go on intellect and willpower. It's inspirational to every kid, white or black, uh, rich or poor. At Fort Scott, he found a very well-equipped school. The building is in very good preservation, not because of Carver, but because of a different period of its history when it was Fort Scott. He was there a couple of years when something happened that chilled him and was so horrifying. He was at the home of someone that he was doing work for and a mob of a thousand whites came down the streets. This was not even a large town. They were from all the country around. A thousand people dragging a man, black man, with a rope by his feet along the street. They had dragged him out of the jail, but the story and what he'd been accused of and what happened after George saw it, he never found out, he never knew. He left that town that night and never turned back. He went to Olathe, just south of Kansas City, and spent about a year there and met his third aunt and uncle, Lucy Seymour and Ben, also called Christopher, he had two names. And they moved out to Minneapolis, Kansas, where George followed them. He stayed to finish school, and then he took a train out there. And he stayed there for about four years, and it was really there that he started to get a sense of the mission of his life that he was going to be working for his people. He ran laundries wherever he went, and Lucy Seymour was an expert laundry. She taught him the fine points, and he became a master of that, as of so many other things. He went to Kansas City and he took a stenography course and he applied to Highland College in the northeast corner of Kansas. He was accepted by mail, but he went up to Highland and they said, we didn't know you were black, you can't enter this institution. It was, of course, a huge blow. That was where he was aiming. He was asked about it later and he said, there is so much of beauty so much of sublimity in the world that you can't waste your time getting bitter. You can get in touch with the Creator at any time through the things He has created so that you have a sense of pity rather than otherwise. When we learn to look to God through the things God has created, we can't waste our time hating folks. You can't harbor bitterness. It clogs the channel. I can't do my work if my heart is bitter. <laughs>